Well, today I'm out in the pasture and I want to show you uh, we're prepping this pasture corral field whatever uh, for uh, planting for tilling it under and replanting it um, if you look behind me you see this green stuff here is bamboo it's called quila in uh, Chilanese uh, Chil Chilean Spanish and it's it's different than um, regular bamboo and I'll show you how it is. So if you look at this, this is bamboo, you know, looks like bamboo in the US, like you see in other places in the world, but it's solid, it's not hollow, okay? And it is extremely invasive. Uh, it, this, this grows this big in a year, come, came up over the top, and um, eventually it'll take over this whole field. And it's a very invasive plant. So I'm walking through the pasture here today, uh, picking up rocks and sticks and stuff and putting markers out for where the septic tank is and the lines and the water lines, electric lines, trying to keep uh, the gal guy at the plow off of everything. And I'm noticing some things. I'm gonna walk over here and show you. Right here. See those little nodules? Those are actually bamboo getting ready to come up. All this will, will come up like that. Here's a real real good example here. This one. Can you grab that? Okay, so these little nodules here, that's all bamboo getting ready to come up. Okay. And the bamboo here, it grows several ways. And and I believe this is one of them. And, and I'm not an expert on this by any means, but I looked at a piece of property before we bought this property up uh, about 40 miles north of us, and it was an old farm like this, and they had not plowed it in, I don't know, 10 years. And what happened is, is these little mounds like this, they actually became like this high. And I asked the guy, what are those, ant, ant hills? Because, you know, I was new in Chile, I didn't know any better, and there's not a lot of ants here. He said, no, that's the bamboo. He says, you, you'll have to come through with a bulldozer because they were like this high or somebody with a really good plow to knock them all down. So it just so happens. So it just so happens that we're planning to plow this right now. And part of that is uh, I'm walking out here and finding out that we're plowing at just the right time. Uh, I bought, uh, 
two tons of uh, lime for this pat for this pasture. It's a half an hec half a hectare, which is about uh, a little over one acre, and uh, it it needs to have lime on it. Two tons of it, actually. We have very acidic soil in some regards. It's high on the acid level, so the lime brings that down. And then I'll put what they call triple on it, which is phosphate. So uh, uh, 82 sacks of um, lime cost me, oh, I think it was 100 and almost 200,000 pesos. So this is like a lot. <laughs> uh, and I had to get it shipped here or brought here or trucked here because I couldn't take it in our trailer. So that was another 60,000 pesos. So I paid about two, three hundred dollars, two hundred and fifty dollars probably for the lime just for this pasture. And which makes you really wonder about these people have these huge farms, how they afford that. So, But it has to be done. And then we're just going to sow it in grass. And we're going to move the sheep over here to the other pasture until the, the fall. And then we'll rotate them back over here into this pasture once it's established. And we'll plow up that one in the back. I have had this grill since right after we got here to Chile. I had it made and I love this grill. So this grill is big enough to fit a whole hog on it and slow smoke it. And that's, that's the way I was raised, smoking hog like that. And um, well, so it's got a few things that needed to be cleaned up on it and fixed up and uh, get away from Mr. Buzzy there. We're having a party here for about uh, 40 people uh, later in September and because of that I wanted to spiff up the grill. Hey! So I want to spiff up the grill because, well, I want it to look nice. We're going to cook a sheep. There's Thomas working on it. And we're going to cook uh, some pig and some beef and some other things. Thomas, open that up and show him the inside of the grill. Um, but one of the things that we needed to do is replace the cutting board on the front. Um, got all the tools on the inside. And the other thing I need to do, if you can see, and you probably can't, but in here is uh, the bottom is round and that bottom uh, that metal plate there is, is actually a, a wood grate but the metal below it is a sacrificial bottom and that bottom is is met its life so it needs to be replaced I put a longer cutting board on here there's the old cutting board sitting there on the ground soon to be firewood uh, this one is made of walnut yeah yeah, and it has, it comes out to here. The one over there came out to here, and it only came to there. So I need it to uh, extend it. I wanted to extend it out to here, and there, you see there's a bracket here for it, and I, I need to build a, weld a bracket on there so it stays, doesn't sag, is what my intent is. And uh, I just need it more counter space when I'm cooking, and that really gives it. Um, my other thoughts are I got to come up with a way to be able to easily remove it because I, I don't like 
the cutting board being outside all the time because the grill stays outside too. We power washed it uh, earlier. Tom's sorry to get it dusty again. But um, after I get it cleaned up again, we're going to paint it black again. And a friend of mine, Ernest, who originally built the grill section, not the trailer that it sits on, Ernest is going to put a new bottom in it for us. And this is the second or third bottom I put in it. Yeah. Uh, and this grill is wonderful. I fed 150 people off of this grill and uh, at an event that we did and another one for Netflix. So I've done a lot of work with this grill. And this rack here in the back, if you guys are curious about that, is to hold these plastic tables. I brought those with me. Another one way over there by the car from the United States. And they just slide in there. And I can go down the road and they aren't going anywhere. They kind of lock in there. So my A number one woodworking dude there is the one who built the cabinets in the bathroom upstairs, Thomas, is working on this for me. And he's done some really nice, nice stuff. He, he made the hole here in the top right there for the latch. And there's the latch up there in the, in the lid so it can lock down and drive down the road. Rounded over my edges nice for me. Uh, I, I like the rustic look of the wood, but I want the, the sharp edges taken off in the bark. The bark just, just holds dirt in my opinion, so that was uh, the, the, the facts of life. And this is, whoever was cutting the tree, when they cut it down, cut that there. And uh, well, that's a chainsaw mark. And, uh, but it'll work fine for us. Um, I bought this this walnut. Uh, I bought this board of walnut from a friend of mine who owns a cabinet shop here. And uh, whenever I need wood, special wood, I go to see him because he knows where to get it. So that's a beautiful piece of walnut. Thomas is making new handles for the grate and for the sand and the ones for the lid. Um, see that that sands up pretty nice there. I believe these are PE, aren't they, Thomas? No. What are these? I don't know, but anyways, he's going to put those back on there too. Heck, they might be long with that one. So, anyhow, let's update on a little grill. Hopefully I'll have some shots for y'all when we get things going. Anyhow. Alrighty. So today has been a fun-filled day. Uh, um, this morning our water tank blew up. <laughs> uh, when we turned our pressure pump on, the end blew out, flooded the second story, at least our bedroom of our house, and rained down the first story, which is always interesting. But yesterday it was raining buckets, Sunday, and or Saturday, and we drove up 
to some friends uh, north of us and we went in Havies for, for three parts with uh, some people and bought 500 strawberry plants and we have a total of 200 and I th I've done another video I'll probably be a part of this video of us making these tubes for the strawberry plants here's what a strawberry plant looks like they call them starts you got the little runner that the leaf's going to be on and there's the the roots okay and I get this you have to buy these sticks you would get these in the US at tractor supply if you believe that you believe other things you get your log same size of the whole stick push it in there all the way to the bottom pull it out put it in its holding place take the roots stuff them down in there gently not trying to break them off with the runner sticking out there's a runner right there getting ready to come out see if I can get that runner out without breaking it off yeah and then you follow that with some poo compost it manure which acts like a Kind of like caulking it in there, you know, with caulking. And uh, doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to work. There's the strawberry plant in there. I missed this hole right here. I got one on each side, so I'm going to put me one in there next. And rinse, recycle, do it again 200 times, and you got strawberries. I need some more. Mommy needs more. Bunch of plant Bunch of Um, you know, these strawberries cost uh, sixty thousand pesos for five hundred. Um, I don't know what that comes to the two hundred. I didn't think about that. Uh, I guess you could divide it into about eighteen, eighteen thousand pesos. But anyhow. $60 is about $130 in the U.S., I'm guessing. Um, a little less. Yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, um, so that's what we paid for the strawberries. I don't know what variety they are. Did you find out what variety these are? He told her, but she forgot. They're the strawberry variety. And they 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 produce a kilo and a half per season of strawberries the first year. And we're in the first year. Uh, we're in the plant season right now, obviously. And we should have strawberries by December, -y, mommy. December, we pray. Yeah, if everything goes right. Here's the big bunch of them here. And that you know they don't take up a lot of space for. 200 strawberries, but that's what it looks like. So anyhow, uh, that's what we're doing today. Have you hugged your donkey today, Thomas? Yep. What's your donkey's name? Daisy. Is that a boy donkey or a girl donkey? Girl. And what's the other one's over there's name? Tulip. And it, it, which is your favorite? I want to say this one right now. Right now? Yeah. Yeah. How old is, is that donkey you got there, buddy? I'd say about maybe nine months now. Nine months, yeah. Yeah. And she looks so sweet. Is she mean or nice or what does she do? She's nice. Yeah? Not very mean. What are we going to do with that little donkey? I'm going to put her on a wagon. A wagon? And then what? I don't know. You don't know? You're just going to leave pull, her up? Uh, pull uh, fire up from the woods and yeah, maybe we could put them both on on one wagon and go to town. A little maybe. sulky or something, a little team. That would be nice. 